for coming. Thank you for having us. Welcome to my little fixer-upper here in Western Kentucky, but... It looks like you already fixed it all up. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that, but uh, it's a work in progress. This is my dog, Howard. Howard? Yeah. It's a pleasure. What's the story with the bobcat? I was only 14 and first time in the woods by myself, and it was tracking me, so. Wow. And he followed me up a hill, so I was scared to death, really. But I shouldn't have killed it. I didn't know. It pr I probably could have made a loud noise and it would have, like, ran away. But I kind of love taxidermy, too, in a weird way. S.G. Goodman is a new voice at the intersection of Americana and Indie Rock, a natural-born storyteller. S.G. left her family's Kentucky farm to make pop music before embracing authenticity and bringing world-weary stories of country living to life. Her unvarnished guitar sound and hard-hitting lyrics have made her an informal chronicler of the South, a title she is proud to bear. We spent the day driving around Murray, Kentucky, revisiting SG's DIY roots at her favorite record store and playing music as the sun went down over Kentucky Lake. I'm your host, Tao, and this is Southern Sounds. This is pretty neat. I like old maps, and my dad's a farmer, and he farms this area. It's called uh, the New Madrid Bend, so if you're looking at a map in, in Kentucky, that's the New Madrid, we call it the Bend. And um, it's kind of strange because there was a family feud noted in Mark Twain's Life on the Mississippi between the Watsons and the Darnells, or legend has it, that they went to the same church. Mm -hmm. And one was from like the Tennessee side and one was from the Kentucky side and both families would come and sit on their respectable sides and would line their guns up on the sides. We are probably related to those Darnells somehow because basically for a very long time, my family has been in this area, Western Tennessee, Western Kentucky. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, and out in the woods, this picture is clear to me all my life to even my enemies. Can you talk about the difference between writing and songwriting for you? Writing like a story compared to songwriting. Right. Or I should ask, do you have a background in writing and then did you segue into songwriting? You know, I have a philosophy degree and I have a creative writing minor degree, but I, I wouldn't say that makes me a philosopher or a, you know, like a story writer, but I have dabbled. <laughs> That's as far as I would say. This world, oh. Without saying, I love you. Tell me about that song. Um, that's my song, Space and Time. It's just a, you know, a love song of sorts, I'd say. So. If you can see through the dirty windows, we're in downtown Murray. You know, just cute little southern town square. Different little businesses pop up and die here over the years, but kind of like the story of every little place. So what is there to do in a town this size? We're going to go down to Terrapin Station. This is a uh, really notable place for me really important place when it comes to me um, 
kind of cutting my teeth as a musician because they would do DIY shows here, and I've seen bands from all over the world play in Terrapin just because we're located right between Nashville and St. Louis, so it's a real easy little spot to drop off into and actually play to a crowd that wants to listen. This was an old pseudonym of mine, the Savage Radley. <laughs> I wrote pop music, actually. The craziest thing about that is there is a song on my record now that was one of the first demos for the Savage Radley that I made. Wow. Mm -hmm. Can you talk more about your shift from making pop music and into writing more personal songs? So I love pop music, and I think it can be just as high art of any other kind of music. But I did find that performing it did not feel authentic. I felt like a karaoke person. I didn't believe in the songs. I think writing things that mean more to me and feel more personal allow me to sing them over and over. But the funny thing about the pop record was that's actually how I met Tim. I was just working afternoon, and SG walked in here, and then you just handed me a bunch of CDs. She said, uh, I just made this this uh, this album. Can you just give it away? I think first I said, how much do you want to sell it for? And he said, no, just put it in people's bags, you know? Mm -hmm. So we did that for a long time. Mm -hmm. After I listened to it especially, we played it in the store. They'd ask what it was, and I'd say, oh, well, actually, here, it's yours. You can have it. That's free. Mm -hmm. Tim, um, are you making that up? No, part? I'm not. I'm Thank not you. making it up. That's so sweet of you, Tim. I'm not. That's so sweet. When you live in a small place, because there's not always a lot of things to do other than to sit around and swap stories, I think that's why there's so many great storytellers from the South. Oh, if you were someone else, I'd see your pain and then there'd be enough. Oh, if you were someone I loved, I'd take my hand and I'd, I'd stop the blood. All from hill to toe, I'll go, I'll go. From hill what does it mean to you to be from the South? It would be wrong to ever describe the South without like talking about the complexities and oftentimes people who are not so welcoming of people different than them. You are also privy to the complexity where those things contradict themselves. People talk about Southern hospitality for a reason. Right, right. Holding the poor up by their throats. What do you think you try to pay tribute to in your songwriting? I was kind of taught to, in writing, to respect your characters. Imagine you have a flashlight as the writer, where you, you get to point it and let people see what you want them to see. As a songwriter, I get to humanize them, because oftentimes the South isn't treated with respect. So I think it's a, you know like a Southerner's duty to um, kind of speak truth to that. I'd take my hand and I'd, I'd stop the blood. What do you hope people find in your music? I think my goal always as a songwriter is to write something memorable. And um, I don't really think about it much more than that. Oh, you child. Just like a mama killed you, I covered you up. You were someone I
songs. You know, there's something about a melody that connects you to your whole life. Our stories deserve to be heard. Write a song for my wife, and if she likes it, everybody else is going to like it, too. Story we hold on to in our last dying days. 